I will. Hey, it's Clay on the trail. I got a special edition for us today. I'm at Hiuena Goats. Hiuena Pack Goats. Uh, he runs a pack goat rental business. Uh, here to talk to him about um, what it takes to pack goats and how much they can carry and all that kind of stuff. So we'll uh, introduce everybody. Okay, we've been packing with goats since 1994 approximately. And the uh, reason we got into goats, the wife has bad knees and was unable to carry a heavy backpack anymore since we were avid backpackers in our younger years. Uh, 10, 15 day trip, 100 miles trips was an everyday thing for us. And doctor says get rid of that backpack or you'll have new knees in a couple of years. So we got rid of the backpack, we give her a day pack and we got goats and almost eliminated her load and reduced mine by three quarters and we continued down the trail and we've been packing goats now for over 25 years and currently uh, probably about 10 12 years ish ago we uh, started renting them it wasn't intentional it was a neat idea you rent your goats out not really and then uh, it became such a demand, started renting them out, and it just blossomed from there. We are currently the only person in the nation that rents goats as a business. We, at this time, we have 31 pack goats of various ages. So goats are different than, like, I pack with a horse, and I, we run cattle, we've run sheep and stuff before, and goats and sheep are a little different than other animals. They require a little more mineral, a little more supplement. Goat requires copper. Copper will kill a sheep. Yes. So these are two different brands of mineral salts that the goats have free choice at. And then we've got the feeding system here, and Powder Mountain. Se separate them out so they're not fighting over feed. Each one has basically their own feeder. If they get pushed out of one feeder, they go to the, they next, can go one. To the next one. There's a feeder for, there's as many feeders as there is goats, pretty much. All right. I don't all want right. all of you, I just want Weatherby. Well, so Weatherby. he's got a shelter for their goats also. They all have names, they wear bells. That's Zizix, Hercules, Rain. And tight, we got all three of these as bottle babies. Okay. Now I've seen a lot of goats. People will uh, take the horns off, and I see that you have them on. Why? What? What are the horns good for? Horns is what they use to dissipate body heat. Okay. That's their cooling system. They've got blood vessels about that size that go in and back out, and the horns act as a radiator to keep their bodies cool. You never grab the horns of a goat it's okay to touch them to feel them they're hot and then they get cold okay. so you can feel the heat dissipation there but you never grab the horns of a goat that's challenging him and he will challenge you back and you will lose <laughs> guarantee isn't that right her yeah you get a saddle put back on come on come on that's caster he's 265 pounds so obviously the bigger goat, the more that they could carry. The more they can carry, which they can carry the same as you and I should carry, but don't, which is one fourth of our body weight. So a 200 pound goat or person should not exceed 50 pounds. And for the goat, that includes the saddle as part of his total weight on his back. Okay. So I, I know that goats are herd animals. I live on a ranch and I've been around uh, livestock enough. So you will only rent in pairs two two or more goats okay i've got a group here in about two weeks a group of nine people they're taking nine goats to the wind rivers for 15 days okay so yeah and that and that raises another question i guess we can talk about you ran out you said in a 300 mile radius which would cover from from your house the uinas into colorado the wind uh the wind rivers southern utah idaho a touch <clears throat> of montana is the area that they go in which is an approximate if you've got means to care for them and the first day of hiking is a short day we can work with you for your trip on the distance travel because traveling in the back of a trailer is different 
than you and I setting and traveling a truck because they're back there trying to maintain their balance as you're going like this along the road. And so sure. when you get to a trailhead after a long trip, they're exhausted from maintaining their balance and standing all day long in that trailer. So that's why I have the mileage limited and, and the time in the, in the back of a trailer. So it's always good to stop every now and then every couple hundred miles or so, walk them around at the rest areas and give them a snack to eat and, and they'll do good. But just on the first day of hiking, after a long day of traveling, just keep the mileage low, make it an okay. easy day until they get uh, rested from the travel. And that would be real similar with my horse. I always let my horse stand outside the trailer after I travel them somewhere, let them settle down, let them get their feet underneath and rest them before we start going anywhere. Yeah. So very, very similar. And as you can see, my leash system here, what we've done, we've wrapped it around several times. And then we can clip it back to the carabiner here. If I need to make fine adjustments, I can hook this on the Persic knot right here. And, 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 it and, and, and adjust it whatever room. length I need to by hooking it on the Persic knot. Okay, and this is also the same one I use to tie them out at nighttime as well. Okay, and, and all when you rent a goat, it, you're getting the goat, the pack saddles, the panniers, the leashes, and all the stuff that's required to care for them. All equipment needed to use and care for the animals is included in the rental. Okay. To include about a two to three-ish hour class on how to for everything okay you require the training before you let your animals out training is required if it's a one-time class if it's been a few years since you've had the training we will do a little refresher saddling is the most critical thing for your trip is get the goat saddled properly if it's not a good if it's too loose you're going to get saddle sores and he's not going to do worth a darn on the trail that's one of the biggest problems we're having is improper saddling, not putting them tight enough, and we'll cover that here in a little bit. Okay, perfect. Okay, so what's okay. this goat's name? This is Weatherby. He come out of Colorado. He was one of my freebies that someone couldn't couldn't keep anymore, didn't want, and I've had him about eight, seven, eight years now. We've had him, he's been a, a good goat, but this is his last year of packing. He's gonna be retired soon. And if you notice, all of my goats have bells on their collar. So when you go down the trail, you go jingle, jingle, jingle down the trail. It's for your safety and their safety, especially in bear country. In bear country. The more noise you make, the safer you are. Sure, and a goat would be a delicious snack for a, for a bear, although they do have their defenses. No, because the goat can outrun us, so we're going to be the <laughs> snack for the bear. <laughs> perfect, perfect. <laughs> okay. Uh, saddling a goat, tie him up on a short leash. Okay. And if you got two goats, tie the other goat over there, one over here where they cannot interact with each other because while you're working with this goat, that goat's gonna want all the attention and they're gonna be button heads and it's gonna be hard to work with them. So each goat should be tied separately where they can't reach each other on a short, on a sure short leash. Okay. And I say the first thing you do is give them a good, thorough brushing they have a short wiry hair so it's important that it's not matted and yeah and don't be afraid to brush these are this is the best brush out there and they're plastic so you can really give them a good firm brushing with the lay of the fur Get all that the same between behind his front legs in anywhere the pack saddle is going to touch him basically. Anywhere the so, saddle and the straps touch him. So we'll see here in a minute a saddle has a cinch just like a horse that goes around their uh, right behind their front legs and then a breast, a yep. breast strap a and a strap. strap that goes around their tails and that way as they're going up and downhill the pack's not uh, moving Okay so, so he's all all nice and clean no burrs on him everything good under there all nice and smooth. Everything is done on the left side of the animal. The same as horses, mules, llamas. Everything is done on the left side. 
So you grab your saddle, put all the straps so they all hang without being tangled. And each saddle has the goat's name on it. Oh, okay. That says Weatherby right okay. there. And Weatherby can carry 46 pounds. Okay, genius. That is the panniers and everything inside the panniers. Okay. So total, add, total weight of the saddle. No, the saddle is is already included in this weight. Oh, okay. So 46 okay. pounds plus seven pounds for the saddle. Okay. So the saddle is already calculated into his overall weight. So this 46 is what goes between those two bags there. Okay. His total weight. So okay. when you pick the saddle up, make sure that it's clean. No foxtails, no pine needles, no burrs. Anything that's going to dig into his hide. There's a little something right there I could feel. Same thing as something on your sock. Okay, and it, it's, it, it's a wool pad, basically. Yeah, it's a wool pad, it's breathable. And then you make sure it is centered on the saddle, side, side, and all the way around, so it's centered. Okay. Everything is hanging square. Shoulder blade, see where the shoulder drops off? Right there. Yeah, you can see the line. Right there. This wood part goes right, just like that. So this goes just aft the shoulder blade, one finger width aft. Okay. So you put it all the way forward, put your finger in here, and tilt that first knuckle down. So that first knuckle, when that drops off, you got that one, that width there. Okay. You feel it kind of drop in that pocket. Hold the saddle, take the butt strap, put it down. Make sure the tail comes up. Watch his horns. Don't get the uh, leash caught in him. Click. Everything is all pre-adjusted. And he's being a good goat today. About three fingers after the armpit. There we go. About three after the armpit. And then you put your hands in here. So you don't, yeah, grunt. So you don't pinch his fur okay. as you cinch it up. And then you check the tightness. They do the same thing horses do. No. Okay, saddle me up. Okay, yeah, take now saddle, cinch it. Oh, yeah. Okay, <laughs> now it's nice and loose. So after you give it a second, you should barely get one finger under, under here. Under the bottom. Right at the bottom, between yeah. his front legs, you can barely get one finger in there snugly. Okay. If you can get two, or I can get two fingers, that's too tight, that's too loose. Too loose. So, so just take it up one more notch. Take it up one more notch, buckle it down. And now I can barely get one finger in there. Now it's tight enough, the saddle's not gonna move, it is now part of the goat. Okay. While you're down here, you have to stretch that fur out from underneath here so it doesn't chafe his armpit. So you're gonna gently push the goat away from you, grab him here, up and, up. and pick up. And I do now, the same thing with my horse, believe yeah, it or now not. Now pull him towards you, do the same thing, and then up. And what that's doing, it's taking, and see so how it's pulling that. Stretching the loose skin. It's taking that fur out, so now he can walk freely without chafing, chafing. and rubbing him raw. Okay, now yeah, I so, saddle my horse up, I do the same thing. I pick his front uh, yeah. legs up and pick him up, and it gets the skin nice and smooth underneath the cinch. And that is critical to a comfortable Goat. Sure. Of and course, the more comfortable he is, the better he's going to travel for you, and the further you're going to yep. you're going to get. Okay, so this undo it, head to tail, and we're going to put the panniers on him now. This is easier with two people, but one person can do it, and I'll show you how we do that. These are, by the way, basically empty panniers right now. Yeah, they're, they're just they full just of have fluff. stuff stuffing in them. They actually have the other set of panniers inside of them. Okay. So you can see how I'm supporting the weight. And, and they just have the nylon loop that goes across. And this is a sawbuck style or cross. This is a sawbuck. The sawbuck style. Yeah, so you just like a horse pack. So I'm supporting this, this panu with my knee. Okay. I'll bring this one over. If you were to stick all the weight on just one side and walk away, they would be super lopsided and they could tip over. I mean, depending on the weight. Well, here. they could slip and slide. So okay. now once both are on, you can let the weight go. Okay. And then you make any tweaks, adjustments, 
to get them level and stuff right there. And that's on, and then you take Getting this. Balanced. The panniers, again, the weight of each goat is stamped on the pan on the saddle here, 46 pounds. So between these two will be 46. We try to balance them between eight and 16 ounces between the two sides. Okay, so, that way so they're not walk they're not the walking all sideways, and it keeps the saddle centered. Okay. So he is now ready to to march down the oh. And then these would go across. Oh, yes. This goes across on the other side. And these are your compression straps, and there's two of them. There's the other one right there. They'll come up. And, and, they, go and they're the your side. compression straps here. Okay. And they're like, just like, I, I have to keep comparing this to horses because that's what I know, but uh, they know their width once they get their packs on and they will eventually stop running into stuff. They kind of figure out their width. They, they do finally learn how wide they are, but you still got to. Okay, I can't go through those narrow trees. Let's go here and go around the narrow stuff because sometimes they forget how wide they are. And if they go somewhere too narrow, they will push until something gives. <laughs> either either the, tree the tree and not the pack? And not the panniers. <laughs> okay. So and I'm saying he is ready to go down the trail now and, and he should just follow me. Come on. Okay, which is something nice about a goat. Uh, I've seen lots of guys carry uh, llamas and other. And see, they just follow you right down the trail. It's a clap, clap, clap. Let's go. And yeah, away they, you go down the trail. If you get around a group of people, sometimes you need to grab their leash and kind of get them to uh, to keep following you. But once you're just out on the trail, they will just follow you like a dog. Yes, literally. In fact, let me show you how we do that. Since we're on that right now. Okay, leash there. Okay, so the leash just hooks to the collar. Carabiner to collar. Okay, it's got carabiner to carabiner. Turn here, carabiner to carabiner. Okay. Now the okay. leash. Let's my camera. Goes up here. The the bell has to hang freely. Sure. This goes around here, and it just kind of hooks on right here. And he so, walks and he goes jingle so jingle. It's loose enough, it's not pulling on him. But right, it, it, it's, it's not pulling tight at all. He's carrying it, but if you need to grab the leash for some reason, it's right Oof, there. I got it, just like that. And I've got a nice little four foot leash I can I can grab him with. Okay, and, and I know crossing water. I, I've packed the Highline Trail uh, a couple of different times and I did take goats once and they do struggle with crossing deep water. They don't really care Here, for it. Catch but, this. But you can throw the now, carabiner to another person and then and one, now you can pull him. Yeah, once you get him started, the then he will just go ahead and go on his own. Once he gets his feet wet, oh, my foot, it didn't melt off. Yeah, Prop, then off, splash, splash, it's okay. And away you go just like the w Wicked Witch with water. <laughs> okay. they, they're not going to melt off. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. Also, with these panniers, you have loops right here. You can secure stuff that too big to fit inside. So both sides have a. You can put like say your bed rolls or something there, but that's all part of the total weight. Okay. Plus, you can put something underneath here. Okay. And that's across. and that's how I packed. You have a different style pannier than I packed with, but yes, with a top pack. Such um, as this. That would go in like that, just like a horse. That could go on the top for your sleeping right bag with it, but this is also part of the total weight of the goat. Okay, so all three combined still has to be under the 46 pounds for this particular goat. Yes. Saddle off. It's not quite the same. You just kind of reach over here and pull this aside, and here's your clip. Can you see that? Undo the clip, let it drop. Here's okay. the buckle. So you're not taking the panniers off, you're no. just going to take the whole thing off in one unit. Yeah, here's the buckle. We're going to undo the buckle, let it drop. We're going to grab the saddle pads. Oh, which will just come right back off the tail. The goat is now done, and then he will get another brushing and uh, let him go eat. Okay. And He's we, done for the day. Go goats are like deer, they browse. They're not like cattle or horses where they'll just sit in one spot and eat. They'll, a goat will take a bite of something here, a bite of something there. They will eat the top third of the plant. Unlike sheep, there's a reason we call sheep mountain maggots. 
when a sheep leaves an area, it's they clean. Clean right to the dirt. Right to the dirt. Where a goat will only eat the top third so they can grow back, so they can come back and eat it again. A goat is the only leave no trace, environmentally friendly animal that you can pack with. Okay. Uh, goats do not plant seeds in their waste. So they, they're very, they're very, when they put out a pellet, it's dry and there's nothing it, left of it. It's dry, it don't stink, and there's no seeds in it, unlike the larger other pack animals that leave a big blob that attracts the flies and stings and is full of seeds which are spraying noxious weeds throughout the forest. Okay, and, and that's, why, that's why the Forest Service requires a uh, weed-free weed hay, hay if you're going to pack hay in or you should have your animal on it for several days prior to going to the mountains otherwise yeah. they, it's going through their digestive tract and but they're moving it anyway. That does not apply because they digest everything. Okay. I had so. a goat eat one of my polypropylene socks on my trip, plastic sock, and it never, I expected it to come out and he digested, how they digest plastic I don't know, but it never came out. Uh, Backpacker Magazine <clears throat> eight, seven, eight years ago did an article on our pack goats. The title was, my hiking partner, something like that, my hiking companion ate my socks. Yeah. <laughs> the goat. The goat. No, yeah. he did not, but that's what they called it. Okay. And no. <laughs> It is not that bad of an experience as they wrote it out to be. It was a lot better. He just didn't have the experience. Okay. <laughs> the so other saddle. We were just looking at the saddle. This or this pannier. This pannier has an aluminum bar inside of it that comes out, and there's a different style of saddle. It's called a sofra. So sopras saddle, sopras. Okay. which is one of my favorite saddles to use, and it has a hook on it and the pannier hangs just and on the hook just slide right on it just slides right on and then there's a strap right here that straps it and holds it in place but that is my favorite pannier to use okay is the sopras and, and this is a newer style even though these have been around for a while though the older style you have here was these are handmade those are those are handmade uh years ago in the 80s he said he purchased these and they're uh they don't have the bar but they run on the similar these these were made by John Myenskinski. He is the father of goat packing in the U.S. Okay. He lives in uh, down by South Pass, southern end of the Wind Rivers, and he is the father of goat packing in the United States. He wrote the book The Pack Goat. Oh, okay. That you can uh, find online. And these were some of his original panniers from clear back in the early '80s. This is what he used. Is this set of three that this would go on the top okay so a little bit smaller panniers volume wise but but same principle these are just a little more sturdy and probably a little more user friendly yeah the both of the well this and these are made out of a ballistic cloth very very durable and these come with a rain fly and and it's right right in the end of it rain fly is on the a bag at the end the rain fly will keep the entire panniers dry okay and when you're in camp the rain fly will adapt to cover the goat to keep the goat dry while you are in camp so it's a multi-purpose rain fly for trail and camp use okay because they, they this, don't like gotta, getting wet any more than than, no, than we do they hate water yeah <laughs> and this one there's no they're they're water resistant okay and to keep the goat dry you tie them underneath a tree and the tree acts as his, um, as a shelter, um, umbrella as his umbrella. Him. Okay, and this, I did notice this, the material on the inside, it, it's got like a plastic yes. uh, melted into it, something. So these are fairly water. Very, very durable and water, nothing is waterproof, but these uh, are as close not. as you're going to get. Okay, so if you have a down bag, you're still going to want to yeah. want to put it in something uh, completely waterproof, but these these are uh, really and, as and good as your backpack. And this is the style better. of bag that I use for for my renters that they take. It's got the flap top and it has a large oh, like a drawstring. drawstring so you can overstuff them. Okay. They're easy to overstuff. And then you've got smaller compartments on the side that you can put easy access items. Okay. And it is rec now one thing to remember, goats are not pack animals. Goats are your hiking companions. Okay. Not a pack animal. So in other words, what we're saying here is no Dutch ovens, no canned baked beans, etc., etc., no watermelons, that type of stuff. 
you don't have your goat carry something you're not willing to carry yourself. They're your companions. They think they're human or they think you're another goat. I'll let you choose which way that goes. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I bought an um, inflatable uh, paddle board. And if I add it to my pack, it's too heavy. So I have to pick between carrying my gear or carrying my paddle board. So something like that would be uh, a goat like this because it weighs 24 pounds. So just to carry just the top pack, that would be... Yeah. My smallest goat <clears throat> does 24 pounds. Okay. And that's a three-year-old. Okay. So these are, I mean, and this is something else for people to consider. Uh, if you're trying to get into backpacking and you're taking your family, uh, your small children, stuff like that. The first time that I did the Highline Trail, I carried a 90-pound pack, and I think I weighed about 150 pounds at the time. That's why the wife's knees went bad. We were carrying 60-70-pound yes. backs, and she wore her knees out, and uh, that's why we got goats to lighten our load. Yeah, so for sure, for family, uh, you guys can throw a day pack on. You throw your water, some snacks, first aid kit inside your pack. Yeah. And then and then we have these guys to help carry the rest of the load, make it a little more comfortable. If you take your kids or your wife out on a backpacking trip and they don't have a good time the first time, they will never want to go again. So it's important to make sure they're yes. they're enjoying themselves. And, uh, and remember to take care of the goat because the goat's taking care of you. Always. So your campsites depend on food and shelter for the goats not for our convenience so because they, they will doing... eat they will eat along the trail but not enough to sustain themselves they have to be f let out and fed right in the evenings and in, in the morning before you pack up what we recommend is about every hour and a half to two hours you're going to notice the goat along the trail he's going to nibble nibble run catch up nibble nibble run catch up okay hey you guys are hungry Let's, here's a nice shady spot maybe a small creek let's stop take a rest us two leggers have a drink have a snack let the four-leggers have a drink, give it a thirsty, and let them eat until their tummies are full. The goats have four stomachs. Uh, the first one is the rumen, okay. and they eat until the rumen is full. And then as they hike for the next two whatever hours, they're regurgitating their, their cud, rechewing it, and re-swallowing it into another different stomach. different stomachs. And that helps them to maintain their energy to keep them going all day long, is nibbling all day long to maintain their energy. The same as we should do but don't always eat all day long okay. to maintain our energy okay so and I, I know that things are different i know back east they'll do a 30 mile day is no big deal because they're not hiking up and down the hills here in the un is we have a lot of elevation a lot of uh, rocks there's i mean it's a lot of up and down and it's a lot of steepness and you're starting most trail uh or they're starting at nine ten thousand feet in yeah, elevation most of our trails so, start at over ten thousand feet so what kind of mileage can we expect to do with if we're using a goat as a pack at, or a our average mileage, depending on the person and the train, it will vary anywhere between 7 and 15 miles per day okay. is what we average with the goats. I have done 20-mile days with the goats. That We got up one morning in the middle of August up in Uintas, and we woke up. That was about four years ago, I think. Oh, we woke up with 7 snow. inches of snow on our tents and hammocks, and I had some people from Australia with me. We couldn't follow the trail, and so we opted to do a 20-mile walk down, and we come out at Moon Lake okay. from Lambert Meadows. Sure. And because going down, it, we the snow cleared quickly, so we was able to see the trail going down. We knew where we'd come, and that was the easy part. But yeah, 20 miles one day. I've done that many times. I'm tired, so are the goats. The following day is a is a short day or an easy day. But yeah, they they will do it. But okay. again, you got to watch them and make sure they're, they're doing good and let them eat. And another thing, I have people get back, well, the goat never drank. He didn't drink any water the entire trip. Well, goats drink very little water. They get their moisture from the green vegetation oh. that they're eating. That's 90% of their water. Again, that varies on trail conditions, climate, and everything else. If it's hot, and if it's dry vegetation, they're going to require a little more water. But if it's lush green vegetation, you may not see them drink at all. We did the Highline Trail, 100 miles. I think I had one goat drink twice, another one drank once, and some of the others didn't drink at all for the entire trip. Okay. Uh, eight days, 100 miles, 
updated. Fine. I've done so the highline between can, seven and ten. Ten days is what we average on the highline. Yeah, so you can lead your goat to water, but like a horse, you can't You're make can't make, make him, him drink. drink. Okay, perfect. <laughs> and you you do the highline trail uh, every year. You've done it, or, or at least sections of it for the last how many years? Probably the last thirty years. I've done the highline trail. And you guys do. I, I've done the Highline Trail, and I've, I did the traditional, not from highway to highway, but from Leedy Peak to the Highline Trail on the Highway 150 side, and that's about 84, 86 miles. You do a Spirit Lake or Hoop Lake we, entrance? In the past, we have done Spirit Lake to Hayden Pass at the Mirror Lake Highway 150. That's basically 100 miles, within a mile. Uh, this year, we started at Hoop Lake. I'll never go back to Spirit Lake again. The trail's just that much nicer. The trail is that much nicer. I don't have those switchbacks at uh, Tamarack Lake. And I don't have those switchbacks going down into Burnt Fork. And I don't have to cross Burnt Fork anymore. So we go in at Hoop Lake. It's a much easier hike. It's a nice gradual climb. And you drop right down to the Highline Trail. And it's only another two miles to Island Lake. And we went from Hoop Lake all the way over to Fox Lake in an easy day and that was 12 miles. Okay. Now the hard the hard question. These are rentals. So what, what does it cost to rent two goats to to, for, to the mountains? Okay. The goats go for $35 per goat per day with a minimum of two or more animals. So 70 bucks get you two goats and all equipment needed to use and care for the animals to include a uh, two to three ish our training classes, training class on how to use and care for the animal. And that training class will usually include a short hike of a mile or so just to get you when they do this, you do that. And the goat gets used to you a little bit. Okay. It is rare, but sometimes we do have personality clashes. <laughs> I had two of them this year. I had to go swap out goats for them and sometimes the goat and the people just don't click. Okay. Well, it that, happens. That, that it's makes rare, sense. but it does happen. That makes sense. <laughs> and there's nothing worse than being with somebody for a couple of days that you don't like. So. And the secret is the human has to be the alpha. The goats look to you for guidance and direction. And so you be the leader, you be the alpha, you be firm, but you be gentle at the same time and they will follow you anywhere, literally. Okay. We have summited King's Peak with the goats. They were empty, but they have summited King's Peak. I do not recommend it for my customers, but that's their capability. So they're, they're way better on rocks. I've taken oh, yes. horses places and you just have to tie them up in the trees and then go on foot to go places like that. But these goats, uh, that's what they are. They will follow you. Goats were built for the mountains. Horses, for the Technically, we'll, we're built for the prairies. They are not a mountain animal, but that's where everyone uses them is in the mountains, and they're not built for it. Goats are built for it. And if you can walk it upright, they'll get there easier than we can. Okay. This is where he keeps all of his equipment, and each uh, one is named. There's the saddles, uh, the leads, all the top packs and everything. And Boy, when you look at it, that's a lot of goats when you look at it. Every goat has a saddle, literally. Even though they're not packing yet, every goat has his saddle. Okay. okay, so just like when I pack a horse or when you pack any animal, when you get to your campsite, the first thing you do is unpack. I mean, I'll drop my backpack if, if I'm carrying one, but that's as far as you go. You stop and you take care of your animal. Uh, they get to wander around. If they wander too far, I know if they're herd, because they're herd animals, if you tie one, or two of them up and just stake them out a little bit, uh, the other ones won't go very far. Uh, and then you take care of them and then you can stop and finish taking care of your camp, uh, setting your stuff up. So that's really important they take care of these animals. So each goat, when you pack it, comes with a kit. Comes with this kit, which includes a water bowl, which they will probably never use, but just in case, one time I've had to use it on the trail, he went boink. I think anyone knows by what I the word mm. boink me, you just blah, lose all your energy. So we, back then, this was 20, 20 years ago, over 20 years ago, we had Cytomax for electrolytes. We poured some Cytomax in here, dumped a bottle of water in here. Here, guys, drink, he drank it up. 
about 10 minutes. Okay, I'm ready. Let's go. Let's go down the trail. Yeah. He just needed that pick me up. Okay. He got a little little altitude, a little dehydrated, whatever. He just needed to pick me up. And that's what this is for. Now I've only used it once. But out of better, courtesy. Better safe than sorry. Yeah, out of courtesy at nighttime, you walk him down to the creek or you walk him down the lake or you, you're thirsty, you're thirsty, you're thirsty. You at least offer him water at night before you go to bed. Okay. Uh, I'm saying this is my kit. So the kit includes a grooming brush, plastic brush, a scale, a zero to <clears throat> fifty scale to weigh and balance the pannier so the goat doesn't walk down the trail sideways. Okay. And it includes a little packet which includes goat first aid. It even tells you how to do CPR on a goat if you want, if you <laughs> dare to, or hopefully you don't need to. Uh, emergency whistle, uh, some stuff on bear, bear safety, some forest service ethic cards, leave no trace. Yeah, there's the leave no trace. There's safe campfire building. There's Morse code which we all assume carry a signal mirror with us. My card, my vet's card for emergencies, ground signals for aircraft, if okay. you get stranded or lost, and then a thing on wolves. Yes, there are wolves in the Uintos. There are. There are bears up there as well. Are they gonna bother us? No, <laughs> because the goats go jingle, jingle, jingle down the trail, and as soon as a uh, wild animal or predator or whatever hears a human noise, they're gone. They will naturally avoid humans if they know we're there. I, I was talking in one of my last videos, Clay, uh, I sleep with the Snickers in my pocket at a time, and, and then I, I see guys <laughs> hanging their food sacks from, uh, you know, in bear bags from trees and stuff in the UNs, and I think it's it's a little overkill, but but they are there. In over 30 years, I, have, I shouldn't say this, but I have never once hung my food. The worst <clears throat> I've had was a little chipmunk getting yeah. into my trail mix or chewing the bite piece off my uh, off my bladder. Yeah, and I've, and that's I've the lost worst I've, had. I've lost the mouthpiece off my bladder as well. And that's the worst. But with yeah. goats, jingle, 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 yeah, and anything that's gone. a threat. If something does come into camp, goat being a prey animal, they are very, very alert. And if they hear something or if they sense something, they all jump up and run around, run around, run around, jingle, jingle. And you hear, and then it's like, what guy, what, what's wrong, guy? Hey, it's okay. It's just a howl, owl or it's just a coyote. Shoe, scram, go back to bed, and everything is good. All right. So, for in the Uintas, in the early year, there are bugs. So, there's, I supply bug repellent. This one's almost empty, so there's a full one when, when this other one runs out. And to apply this, you paint the goat like a zebra. This is a roll-on, both oh, of them okay. are roll-ons. So you just run stripes. So you just run a stripe, a stripe down each side of his backbone, about three down each rib, one down each arm, a little top of his head and down his neck, okay. a little under here and down under his chest a little bit. And the stuff radiates around the goat. And this is used when you get to camp if needed. Most of the time you don't need it, but it's those biting flies when they bite you, your whole hand is numb for half the day. Yeah. This stuff works. Not, re not recommended for people, <laughs> but it sure works good. <laughs> okay, also, squirt bottle. Okay. This is discipline for camp use oh, okay. or when they are misbehaving. Like, this is your dinner tonight. Oh, I forgot something in the tent. You run, goat, aha, got your dinner. dinner. And you go chasing after the goat, hey, shoot, scram, hey, get away from me, that's my dinner. The goat's gonna grab it, and, and the goat run. is gonna run. It's his, he earned it, fair and square. So, <clears throat> never chase a goat away from the crime scene when he's getting into your food. It's squirt, 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 no, he will run. If it, if it can reach him, if, it, if he's too far away, a small pebble, a small stick, Throw it at him to get his attention, and then squirt, squirt, squirt. Okay. And he will then drop it and leave the crime scene. You can now go salvage whatever's left of your dinner for that evening. All right. But never chase them away because it becomes a game, a game. and they will win, period. The yeah. more you chase them, the more it becomes a game. And the more their dinner, you're gonna, they're gonna spill your dinner or they're gonna eat it. So then yeah. you, you lose all the way around. 
and they know how to open zippers. Yeah. They, if they smell <laughs> something so in your backpack, they will open the zipper or they will chew through it to get to it. So if you see them snooping around the panniers or your Couple. backpacks, squirt, squirt, no, stay away. And after a while, they just see this and you say no and they will leave. But always keep your backpack zippers down or inside your tent. And same as the panniers, keep them zippers down where they cannot get inside of them. And what I do is I will stack all the panniers together and then I will put the saddles on top of the panniers between two trees. Okay. And that, and you put it close to your tent. If they do rust it, you just slap the side of your tent and say no, and they will leave the crime scene. Okay. Okay, one more thing here. This will feed three goats for one day. This is calf manna. It's got that licorice smell. It's actually not bad to smell. I don't know about eating it. <laughs> but uh, it's got a lot of vitamins, minerals, and nutrients in it that they're not getting at home with their normal meal or their salt licks. So this is at the end of the day. Here, guys, thanks. Job well done. Munch, munch. Pat, pat. Little tree. Good goat. Little, uh... They look forward to it. They know that sound. <laughs> so you can also use this as bribery. I always send one extra bag. And the first bag is to keep in your pocket and you just give them a small handful randomly throughout the day to help with, hey, he's got food, I'm gonna stay here. I wanna be with that guy. And then at the yeah. end of the day, you will split this into thirds for your three goats or two, however many you got. And when a goat travels, when they're away from the herd, when they're with strange people, it is stressful on them. So to help offset the stress, we give them a thiamine, a vitamin B1. Vitamin B. And when a goat's thiamine, when they're stressed, they draw from their thiamine levels in their reserves. If it gets too low, they get what we call goat polio. I'm not even gonna try and pronounce it. No, I mean, And they can die 12 to 72 hours. So to offset that, this is like us taking a multivitamin. I'll put it in my hand. We'll I'll pour this here on top. Here, eat, and, and they'll much, keep much. You got it. They spit it out, don't worry about it. And you only do this for about two nights, and that's it. At one point in time, I actually ran a, ran a herd of goats, and I had 60 does, and I actually lost two does to polio, so I actually knew about vitamin okay. B, and I was giving them a shot. As soon as you'd get the onset of it, I'd give them a shot of vitamin B. A shot is a right now instant yes. cure. This takes a little bit L to little get more preventative. It, it's more preventive, like us taking a multivitamin. So... This is the kit, it doesn't weigh more than a couple of pounds, depending how many days and how many goats, this is the majority of your weight. Sure. Right there, and you can equal that out among the different bags, so it goes fast. All right. Okay, hunting season. Uh, we do not rent our goats in Utah for the general rifle hunt, period. It's not gonna to happen. To, nothing against Utah people, but too many people shoot movement. And then they go see what they shot. We haven't lost a goat, but we've been shot at before. So, fluorescent collars, you can put it around your goat, and it helps them to stand out like a sore thumb. I've got six or seven of those. Also, during Halloween, we pick up this hair color. Okay. And we spray paint the goat. <laughs> so you're going down the trail with a psychedelic goat. Okay. And I mean, you can paint big, a big bullseye big, on big him. visual. You, you can write, I am a goat, do not <laughs> shoot. And also we have this animal chalk and this animal paste. Like sheep, sheep marking paste. Marking yeah. paste that you can mark the animals up. You can put whatever you want to on them. And just have your way with the, with the goat as far as uh, decorating him. And then we've got the ribbon that you can tie on his horns. Okay. So if someone shoots him, Oh, they're, they're just not paying attention. They're not paying attention. <laughs> so that's my hunting kit. Okay, and you also are, you're packing, packing bear spray. And I do have bear spray if you are going into bear country. In the Wind Rivers, bear spray is a requirement. Required. You sure. don't go in without it. If you don't have it, I do have some I can loan out. If you use it, you buy it type of thing. Also, and for... Yeah, for people traveling from out of state, whatever, if you show up and you're missing a piece of equipment, you have a pretty good 
um, stash got, of stuff here you're willing to loan out for yes. people that forgot, but we're not, you're not supplying people with all their gear. No, I don't supply gear, but if you did forget something or something like that, I do have extra. I will loan out to you as extra backpacks. If you're doing a scout trip and a scout doesn't have a decent backpack, I've got four of those blue scout packs. My okay. kids used them um, uh, 35 plus years ago. They were using all those, the old original Janusport. Yeah, I had packs. one of those when I was a scout. Yeah, <laughs> they still got them. Okay. Another thing I offer is Boost Oxygen. Oxygen. This is approximately 100 breaths of 95% pure oxygen. Uh, this last week, we were doing the Highline Trail. I had some people with me from Colorado. They lived at 8,500 feet. Oh, altitude won't be a problem with us. We live at 8,500 feet. Want to bet? Uh, day one, they were feeling a little woozy. Day two, not good. Day three, I'm sick. He couldn't keep anything down, so I gave him some of that acclimate uh, powdered electrolytes. Give him about four packages of that. He drank that down. He wasn't keeping anything down. He was sick. And then I gave him a can of oxygen. This one is natural. This one is peppermint. And there's also a pink grapefruit, about four or five different flavors. Hmm. So you, you can give yourself a breath, and it's enough oxygen to get you down to a lower altitude, which can literally save your life for altitude yes. sickness. That's the only cure is to get to down. To get lower elevation. And altitude sickness is no joke. And that's what we did on this last trip. We were doing the Highline Trail. We only made 45 miles because one of the guys got sick, so we had to come out. And uh, by the time we were getting down, he was starting to feel better, but there was no way we were gonna go back out. For sure. But because of this oxygen, he was able to get out and down to a lower altitude and probably saved his life. So this stuff I do offer to my customers. If you use it, you buy it. They're 15-ish bucks a can, which isn't bad. Okay, we've got four horse trailers, various sizes. Most vehicles can tow the trailer that they got at least a six cylinder engine in them. Uh, this trailer will do four goats comfortably. I can cram six goats in here. And you can put your equipment up here or down underneath here in the storage in there. And each goat in here can be clipped in place so, so they, they can stand or lay down while they're traveling, whichever they want to. And they can't fight and move around in here. And also when they're traveling, it gives them something to brace themselves to brace. with. So as you're going around those rocky roads up and down the mountainside, they're not being thrown all around inside the trailer. Okay. They can hold on to themselves. Okay, so yeah, if you're coming from out of state and you go get a rental car and you're gonna go uh, pack with goats, you have to, that's a consideration a person has to make because you either need a truck. We've carried them in the bed of my truck before or yes. pulled one of your trailers before. If, if you do use a truck, if all the trucks have those little square holes along the bed, two uh, or about two or three of them per side, about two by two, get a piece of two by two and stick in there that only goes to the top of the cab. Yeah. You don't need to go in above the cab at all. And then get a one by four across all the way around the sides and then put another one by four in the middle down the side. So, they're, so can, they're not jumping out of your truck. And then you can tie each goat in a corner and that way they've, they've got something to brace themselves against. They're not being thrown all over the truck and they can stand and ride in comfort. And if you're traveling them with, in bad weather, these are goat coats. This will... Head, head goes through one end. Yeah, this, is, this head will go through here underneath. and it will clip on. And then it goes underneath his belly and then uh, across his butt. And you can see these are felt lined. So, so they will keep him nice and warm and they will also keep him dry. Because when you're traveling with a trailer, as the wind comes over, sure, it drafts, it, drafts it, it inside. It blows the rain and the snow right back into the trailer on the goats. So these we have to make available if you if you're going to be traveling in bad weather to keep the goats warm and comfortable on their trip. So packing with goats, I mean, the bottom line really comes down to they're going to carry some of your weight. They're going to make your trip easier, but it also adds that they they need to be taken care of. They need to be a top priority with you. And when you get the trailhead, this will stay in your truck. They don't need to carry it. Because you have a rain fly in each pannier, 
that you can use on the trail to keep your equipment dry while it's on the goat and keep the goat dry when he is in camp if it is bad weather. Okay. And this is packable, this doesn't weigh but six, seven ounces. So if it's really bad weather, yes, you could take this. And as far as weather goes, here in uh, Southwest Wyoming, negative 35 is common. And you get the wind chill on top of that. And I've got my goats standing on top of their houses here in sub-zero temperatures, just soaking up the sun and just enjoying the sub-zero temperatures and they, they do just fine they're they, built for it. they acclimate so they do so what what time of year do you usually start rentals i mean if somebody wanted to winter pack do you is that okay uh our our normal season is snow melt to snowfall is our general season if someone wants to do it other than that again depends on whether i've got one guy he wants to do a video on winter camping with children and use the goats to haul all the equipment in the problem with winter camping is the goat to a post hole. Sure. And if they post hole, it's going to physically wear them out fighting through that. So if you were able to cut the path with the snowshoes and they and they have a nice solid trail to walk on, they will do just fine in the winter time. But beware that they don't post hole and okay. get, get themselves get wore out and then it will a, physically exhaust them. And, and then of course there has to be feed for them when they get there and that becomes another issue they're gonna have to haul feed in that or go to a place where they can forage yes which usually they can eat the pine needles or the bark off the pine trees the same as what the deer eat like I say because goats are cousins to the deer sure so they eat the same as a deer they're environmentally friendly they are leave no trace so and that's the only pack animal that, that you can say that about so yeah, if a deer can survive, then so can a goat. And as far as the goats go, we only use neutered males. That's all we use is a neutered male. You do not take a fertile animal of any kind into the wilderness, just in case, not that it would, but just in case if they did get loose, you don't have a epidemic of breeding with other- I Introduced domestic. invasive species, species yeah. kind of a thing. So it's all always neutered males, and we do not use the does to pack with. A doe is a much smaller animal, the female, they're much smaller, and they've got these udders hanging underneath them. So when you're going through the brush, you've got a greater chance of injuring the animal if you're using does with udders, with udders, udders on them. There are a few people that do use does. They like the milk on the trail, but they're on easy hiking trails, open country and they're more or less a weekend hiker type of thing. All right, so if you're interested in packing goats, contact uh, Clay Zimmerman. Not very many guys in the world named Clay, and I happen to live by uh, two other ones. Uh, tie you in a pack goats. I'll put all of his information in the uh, link underneath. So give him a try. So I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, video today. Uh, September's gonna be a really weird month for me i've tried to put a video out every week since april so far i've done i don't know if i've missed any or not um but my son's getting married the busiest work week i have of the whole year is coming up over labor day weekend i talked to my boss and he's actually going to let me do a video um, while i'm working so it'll be interesting i'm going to be headed to the uh fort bridger rendezvous that occurs every year over labor day weekend so hopefully look forward to that um, and I just talked to Clay we're gonna try to get a trip in where we actually pack with his goats here in a couple weeks and then I'm going uh, have my son's wedding and then my wife and I are going to Yellowstone so I will be able to uh, um, do a video on that of course too so a uh, little spotty this month but i'm gonna try and get something out so thank you for watching i appreciate all the thumbs up all the new subscribers i uh, appreciate the support I'm trying to trying to grow my channel and uh, make something of it and hopefully i'm giving somebody something worth watching so thank you